We've been asked to find the area enclosed by the ellipse given by these parametric equations, x equals three cosine t and y equals two sine t, and we graph the whole ellipse between zero and two pi. Well, on the x-axis, if I just think about it, bouncing between three and minus three, on the y-axis, we're bouncing between two and minus two, so I can graph the ellipse we're talking about very quickly. So we're looking for the area bound by this ellipse. Now one approach would be to eliminate the parameter, to rewrite this as a rectangular equation. In fact, if we know a little bit about ellipses very quickly, we could write this down as x squared over nine plus y squared over four is equal to one. We could solve for y and maybe just integrate a function, a y equals f of x, to find the area between the curve in the x-axis double it, we have the area of the ellipse, right? And that would look like this. But very naturally, that would become the integral from minus three to three of y dx. And so I kind of want to think about this using the parametric equations instead. And so, you know, from minus three to three, I'm, I'm kind of going this way, but if I think about what t's doing, it would graph going the other direction. We'll see those ideas come up here in a moment. But looking at these two equations, I know what y is equal in terms of t, and I could find dx dt. Let's see, that's gonna be minus three sine t dt, oh, sine t. And I was ahead of myself there because I actually wanna think about that in differential form, where dx is equal to minus three sine t dt. Well, there I have a y and a dx. Now that should be an integral that is not too hard to deal with and also in terms of the variable t. Now from minus three to three would be the natural way to integrate that if we were dealing with this. So what t corresponds to the minus three? Well, that would be pi, and you can actually imagine plugging the minus three in there for x, right? That's an x value. And we'd be asking ourselves, where is cosine equal to minus one? Well, that's a pi. The bound at three, I plug it in for x and I solve, and I get out a zero. So looking at this integral, I have minus three times two would be minus six. And this is an integral from pi to zero. I'd rather it be from zero to pi, and I know what I'm supposed to do when I change the order of integration. I change the sign. All right, and then I have a sine squared. Well, that's not too challenging of an integral to deal with, so let's see what, ha see what happens. I have the integral from zero to pi, I've got that six out front, of sine squared t dt. Well, that's one minus cosine of two t over two dt. So let's see, six divided by two is a three, and I'm integrating from zero to pi of one minus cosine two t. Three times t minus sine of two t, but divide by two. All right, so I have three times pi Minus the sine of two pi, well that's zero, and well if I plug in a zero to both places I get zero, so just three pi. Coming back to my diagram here, when I was thinking about this, uh, that was half of the area, so three pi was half of the area, the whole area is six pi. Well there's a neat thing you can do as a challenge now. Instead of saying three and two, you can go back through the problem calling that an A and that a B, and establish that the area enclosed by a lip, an ellipse is pi times a times b. So for us here, that would be pi, well, times three times two, six pi. And that's it for now.